You're listening to Agile Digital Business with host Vicki Maris. She's an author, speaker, and marketer, helping you with your business transition to digital in content marketing and customer engagement. Hello, my friend. I am really glad you are here spending time with me for this episode of the podcast. Coming up is the main part of the show, which is out of the archives. This is another one of the episodes that I had created when I first launched the show, and it was called Online Course Connections. I've left all of the various elements of the episode as they were at that time. So all you're hearing at the moment that is different is this little bit of content right here and what was at the beginning of the show. I wanted to leave the rest of it as it was, partly for the sake of the archives. And also, I thought you might just have some fun hearing how the show is progressing and how the topics are evolving as I rebrand the podcast to Agile Digital Business. Again, I want to thank you for spending your valuable time with me here on the show. Vicki has another great e-course conversation ready to share. Stay tuned for online Course Connections. Melissa Venable and John Ernstberger are my guests for episode three of Online Course Connections. Online Course Connections is a podcast hosted by online course designer Vicki Maris. She's passionate about improving online experiences and helping people connect in the online environment. Vicki's about to bring you an interview with a pro in the world of online courses. Stay tuned for what's up next. Thank you for tuning in to Online Course Connections. My name is Vicki Maris. I am really glad you are here. Let's give a shout out to Phil McGrath of Content Academy Podcast, who provided his voice for the opening of this episode of the show, and he has provided some additional intros and outros that you'll hear in the upcoming episodes. The main part of the content for this episode is my interview with Melissa Venable and John Ernstberger, and they give their bios as we get into that content. But I would like to let you know that we were in a room that was being prepared for the next talk while we were at this conference. So you're going to hear some background noise as tables were being moved and some other voices in the room. But I don't think it's enough that will keep you from hearing the fun that we had in the conversation and you'll get to learn from John and Melissa about their journey in using Periscope as a platform for delivering a podcast. Let's get right on over to the main part of the show. Here we go. It is my treat to be here this afternoon in Orlando, Florida at OLC, which is an international online learning conference that I've been coming to for 10 years and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger every time. I've just attended a really interesting concurrent session with uh, two presenters who were using Periscope as a platform for doing a monthly podcast. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves. They're going to share some interesting insights about their experience using that fun social media platform of Periscope. So Melissa, could I start with you? Would you provide a brief introduction for my listeners? Sure. I'm Melissa Venable. I work with the Center for Online Education, uh, where I help create web content for prospective online students and for people who are teaching online to kind of keep track of latest trends, um, tips for success, and making decisions about college and career. Where is the Center for Online Uh, Education? Is that what you said? Center for Online Education. Okay. Onlinecolleges.net is the website you can go to get there. And um, the organization is actually based um, in Houston and Seattle. So we all work remote (laughs) to those locations. Houston and Seattle. So you're spread out. Absolutely. All right. So for my listeners in other parts of the globe, Houston is down in Texas and Seattle is in the northwest part of the United States, way up in the corner, absolutely, in the state of Washington. All right, and my other guest, John, would you introduce yourself? Thanks for having us. Um, So my name is John Ernstberger, and I work at LaGrange College in LaGrange, Georgia, which is about an hour southwest of Atlanta. 
And um, I've served as the director of online instruction for the last three years at LaGrange College. Okay. What led both of you to online instruction? And I, I heard in your session that you have some passion for it. Uh, Melissa, what was your journey that brought you to the position that you're in? I began uh, my career in higher ed as a career counselor. Um, and my favorite part of that job became creating instructional materials mm -hmm. for workshops and career fairs. And then when we got websites, <laughs> kind yes. of dating myself there. Yeah, I remember um, that too. What are we going to put on the website? <laughs> kind of starting to, to think about copy and, and, and marketing um, within that context of higher education. And so I continued my education at grad school in instructional design. And then that moved into instructional technology. Um, and then online education became the focus. Okay. John, how about you? Um, I caught the teaching bug as a graduate student. I, I learned that I loved it, and I was always trying to find cool ways to impress people with what we were doing, you know, what we could do with tech and math and science, and um, eventually what it came to is, you know, is higher ed has become more conscientious of what its students need are rather than what we want to give them. Mm -hmm. I was uh, one of the early ones at LaGrange College thinking, let's go do an online class. It just kind of happened when they were all the pieces fell together. And not only did I get to start teaching online, I, I got to help us lead the, I got to help us go in that direction at that school. It was uh, really exciting. That's incredible. Well, thank you both for following your interests in uh, instructional material creation and teaching and online course design. I speak as a adult student who went back for a graduate degree 17 years after my undergrad that the only way I could do that was because the program I did in learning design and technology mm -hmm. at Purdue, a uh, part of it was offered online. I could have never done my graduate right. degree and worked full time right. if I had not been able to take some online sure. courses. All right, so I heard in your session that you guys met online. Tell me about that. How did you get to, how did you meet? What, which was it through a social media platform? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Google Plus. Through Google is Plus. Is how I think we first connected. Yeah. Okay. I was working at the time as a blogger. Okay. Um, my primary duties were creating a daily blog post about okay. higher education. Okay. And um, John picked up on that and followed me on Google Plus, and then we started having conversations in the comments uh -huh. <laughs> of these yeah. posts and. Um, where did you get to the point where you decided you wanted to do a Periscope podcast together? Wow. We crossed paths, I think, <laughs> John's on over social here media laughing. in 2013 <laughs> is kind of when the whole Google Plus thing started. And okay. so then we... We met here in 2014. We met here at this conference in person. Okay. And began to kind of scheme possible collaborative things that we could do. Right. We have similar outlook, similar mm -hmm. approach, interests, you know, within online education. Um, and we've done quite a few things collaboratively, writing, other presentations, um, and then Periscope's the, the latest thing that John brought to me as a, <laughs> as a possible subject. Okay, well that's really interesting. I've, how did you pick the topic? Higher, I heard how you named the scope, mm -hmm. Higher Ed Scope, so uh, if you're interested, that's the hashtag and also your handle, right? right. At Higher Ed Scope. But how did you come up with that topic? You know, I, Melissa and I had this common interest in higher education, and, and I love higher education. I, I mean, it's given so much to me. It's been so many things to me. It's where I met my wife. You know, all yeah. these things, you know, higher ed is just integral to my life, and I value it, and the change that it made, and the changes that it's brought. And so I'm intrigued by a lot of the facets that are just integral to it. And so when we started talking about things that we would want to talk about in a, in a Periscope broadcast, I think it was just almost a given that you know, what, what our expertise is lying in is higher ed. Okay, so you can, it's, it's one of your topics you can talk about and not ever get bored about is mm -hmm. what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to pick a scope topic. You were teaching us the ins and outs of how you set up uh, doing a Periscope broadcast with, you were distant from each other, so right. you were using FaceTime uh, to bring one another in, depending on who was hosting the broadcast. Also, there were pitfalls that you shared. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anytime you have that much technology that you're trying to bring together, it can be tricky. The thing that I pulled away from your session was that 
first of all, you had a plan. Uh, I think a lot of people just jump into something like starting Periscope without a plan. Now, the the beauty of that social media is it is pretty easy to just start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just push record and go. But I love that you really thought things out. You also have a model that if you want to hand it off to somebody else or the people who are here in the room this afternoon, it would be pretty easy to say, here's how we did it. I, I think I we like discussed that. that early on, too, that if we could create steps and we were looking at other podcasts and seeing kind of talking with them and seeing how they did it, you know, and asking them questions about production. But if we could document along the way, which we really tried to do um, with each episode, new notes on what could be better, um, that we would have something that mm -hmm. could be kind of a checklist almost on how to do a Periscope how, series. How did you choose Periscope over the more traditional uh, audio or video podcast that you might host at Libsyn or a similar kind of platform and have available through iTunes? I think we chose it because it was bleeding edge. It mm -hmm. was video, it was audio, and nobody was doing anything on it in relationship to higher ed at least. Mm -hmm. There are a handful of good productivity scopes and personal blogs, but no one was talking about this higher ed piece that we feel like we can offer value to. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a quick break here from the content and ask you to subscribe to the show if you have not already subscribed. I occasionally make an offer available that's related to my workshops or coaching, and the only way for you to hear about it is if you're subscribed, because you'll get a notification when each new episode pops into your podcast player. The episodes announcing the special offers are only left in the queue of my podcast for a limited amount of time to give subscribers first opportunity on the offers. It's one of the ways I like to say thank you for sharing your time with me as a subscriber and a listener of the show. If you would like to suggest a topic or if you have a question, you can add a comment on one of my blog posts at vickimaris.com or follow the hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz. That's biz, B-I-Z. I greatly appreciate it when you share the show with a friend. In fact, if you'd grab a screenshot of this episode on your mobile device and post it with a caption about something that resonated with you from this episode, we can keep the conversation going around this topic long after the episode has been released. Just use that hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz, and at mention me if you'd like. It's at Vicki Maris in Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. And Vicki is spelled with an I-E. So at Vicki, V-I-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-I-S. Now, let's get back to the rest of the episode. Do you have any advice you'd like to give to folks who, whether they're thinking about Periscope and starting a regular scope like you guys are doing, or just pioneering into something that hasn't been tried? Do you have any advice for your uh, peers in higher education about that process? I think the planning piece that you mentioned is important, even if it's a, a loose plan. Um, you know, we had specific goals, but none of them were quantitative. Um, you know, what is it I want to get out of this? Mm -hmm. How am I going to know when I'm done? Or how am I going to know to continue? How am I going to know um, that this is something I need to, to keep moving forward with? So having some sort of an idea where you want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, and then being open to what the journey is between <laughs> when yes. you start and, and when you eventually arrive. Um, being open to exploration and being open to failing. Yes. And having things not work. Um, and not letting that get you down or not, you know, want to keep doing it. Yes. I totally agree with everything she said. And I would add having a partner in crime was huge oh, yeah, because yeah. It, it would be so easy on Tuesday at 1230, at, you know, running out of class, choking down a lunch and trying to get everything set up to be like, this just isn't worth it if it was just me. Mm -hmm. but because it's kind of like having a workout partner. You yeah. know, you know that they're kind of <laughs> counting on you. You're holding each other responsible. And so Melissa and I, we had 
we could have these regular meetings because we knew that we were in this together. Mm -hmm. So that made all the difference. And it made it fun. Absolutely. It took it from being a task or a project to being something that was enjoyable and exciting. Mm -hmm. That was evident from uh, the the feeling of your presentation you could tell oh, that you, you guys nice. had fun during that journey <laughs> yeah. and it did you there was a sense that uh, if if one of you were struggling or couldn't find a resource you needed or something that you might have the other person to call upon and yeah. it, oh, yeah. and lean on so yeah that came through in your talk well I really appreciate you sharing with my listeners today this was a, a fun session to uh, attend and it's as a Periscope user. Uh, I went through a, a period where I was developing a course on Periscope for Udemy. Are you familiar oh, with sure. that platform? Yeah. And I was Periscoping daily for about six months to wow. uh, <laughs> so that I could kind of get the ins and outs and I, I wanted to do that so that I could prepare better content Absolutely. for my course. But as you know, things, things change really quickly and I've been looking at my course going, hmm, Maybe I need to redo some of that content and gear it more towards Facebook Live or perhaps even more generically for any platform that comes along in the future. It could be useful. Sure. Um, so that, that pivot shift to the next thing, we all have it's to be always out ready there for that, the don't we? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure to talk with you, Melissa and Thank John. You, Thank you so much. How can my listeners get in touch with you uh, if they have a question? Is that Google Plus page the best spot? Or uh, and, and that's Periscope, a good spot, right? And Periscope's a good spot. My Twitter handle is my name, Melissa underscore Venable, V-E-N-A-B-L-E. Okay. -E -E. All right. And John? my Twitter handle is J Ernst Berger. <laughs> so I'm going to spell that. It's uh, J E R N S T. B E R G E R, okay. and that's probably the easiest way. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'll, I'll put that in the show notes too Thank so you. that people can find it there on the blog. I appreciate you being a part of the interview today. Thanks. Thank you, Vicki. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Melissa and John. And Melissa, John, if you are listening, thanks again for your time and for sharing your expertise and your energy and enthusiasm with not only me, but my listeners and with the people that were present during the talk that you gave at the OLC Accelerate Conference. Thanks again for spending time with me here in Online Course Connections. I will catch you next time.